Okay, as you can see, the African American women inventors, that is quite a list of inventions by African American women. You can't see what they are that far away, but I just wanted you to see the whole entire list. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can um, look at some of the things, and I'll just read them off because I know you're not going to be able to uh, really see them as I can. So uh, as you're looking at them, uh, when you start watching this video, you might be able to zoom it in so you can see them again. Let me try to adjust. There we go. Okay. There we go right there. You may be able to read along with me on some of them. But just you, I just wanted you to see what a, an extensive list of items were invented by African-American women. Now, this first one is Miss Virgie Ammons. She invented the fireplace damper, September 30th in 1975, okay? Louise Andrews invented lenses, that lens holder accessories. That patent for her is pending, okay? That, that first one I read was the date that she, the date, first date that I read, rather, was the date that she received her patent. So that second one, Miss Louise Andrews, has not had not uh, yet received her patent by the time that this uh, particular information was printed. So Patricia Bath, or Bath, she was a medical doctor. She invented the apparatus for ovulating and removing cataract lenses. How about that? Wow. Okay, Miriam Benjamin. Uh, she invented the gong and signal chair. She's got her patent. Uh, Sarah Boone, the ironing board. Wow. Thank you, Miss Boone, because, honey, I sure uh, rely greatly on my ironing board. Henrietta Bradbury, the bed rack. You know what a bed rack is. I'm assuming it's that uh, thing that you fold up into the wall. And, and hang that bed on or put it back into. Okay, so Marie V. Britton Brown invented the torpedo discharger means. Wow, these women were real smart about something. I.O. Carter, the nursery chair. Joan Clark, a medicine tray. Uh, Beatrice Cowens, embroidered fruit bowl. Wow. This is interesting. Virginia E. Hall, wall hanging and kit. So you all know what those things are. Just think about the many things that we use on a daily basis. A lot of you had no clue that an African-American woman actually invented these apparatuses. Okay, so Gertrude Downing, uh, the corner cleaner attachment. Ellen Elgin, clothes ringer. Kathleen McCoy the siren and horn indicator. How about that? Okay, Ellen, I'm sorry, um, Sarah Googe, the cabinet bed, Bessie Griffin, the portable receptacle. Thank you for that. Huh? Julia Terry Hammonds invented the apparatus for holding yarn skein. So you know what that is when people are, are yarn or knitting or darning or whatever. They have those little things that hold the yarn, the rolls of yarn. Joanna Harden, keyboard stand. Lydia M. Holmes, knockdown wheel toy. Uh, Ruan Jeter, the digital toaster. Marjorie uh, Joyner, permanent uh, weaving machine. And you see some of the dates on these uh, not that far along ago. They were 1985. 1995, some of them, all the way through. So women have been doing these things since in the 1800s up through the 1900s. Okay, so uh, let's see what Miss, let's go on down here and see. Okay, for instance, down here, something really, really, really important. She, uh, Miss uh, Alice Parker, the improvement on the heating furnace. And we know we need that heat when we get some of those cold days going on. So African-American women were really uh, on the ball when it came to uh, inventing different things that we use on a daily basis. Things that we just 
take for granted. Uh, and we know uh, Madam C.J. Walker. Let's let's get it down here at the bottom. Okay, um, Madam C.J. Walker. Now we know all of us need these hair care products for uh, with the straightening comb. Because when I can remember those high school days, every weekend I had that straight that hot straightening comb in my hair, straightening my hair. I'm serious. And some people still use the hot comb. Okay, honorable mentions went to certain people. Uh, let's see, did they say? No, they were just putting them on for future inventors. This was to encourage, I'm sure. So let's just suffice it to say that African-American women have been uh, real cornerstones in inventing some of the things that we use on a daily basis. And some things that if we didn't have, huh, We've been in bad shape along the way. So uh, hats off to all of these African-American women. And I'm sure there are many, 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 many more. We could probably go out there and um, research and look at some other things. I've got another little booklet that I'm going to share with you all later on. It's called 1001 Black Invention. It's, a, it's very, very interesting. A uh, theater group does that in an actual play. And you think about sometimes if we did not have some of the contributions that African Americans contributed to this world, where would we be? If if these women had been kept from doing this, if nobody else invented them, we wouldn't have been able to do certain things. So look at it like that. We wouldn't have been able uh, to have a damper for our fireplace if we if you know we just had kept right on because this happened in 1975 thank god that uh in the 60s that civil rights act was passed and so a lot of things were allowed to happen so hats off to these women ladies we thank you we love you we honor you during this time especially but we honor you all year long as well and throughout life and throughout history so that's just a little bit of uh black history for this particular time frame sorry about the movement so much but i uh just was trying to focus in on it but any of these inventions like i say i'm sure you can go to the library or google it you don't have to go to the library you can google most of this stuff these days but google that 1001 black inventions and you will be amazed at the other some of the other things that african americans have invented so uh, until I decide what to present to you next, I'm going to get on with the cooking and I will see you soon. Love you guys. Again, thank y'all for tuning in and I'll see y'all in the kitchen. Hey y'all, I'm back. After our Black History Tips, this is one of the things that sets us aside uh, as African American family. We always try to do what we can do for our families in terms of food and whatever, just whatever. So what I'm doing this morning, even though this is some uh, Greek pita bread, this is something I made up one day when I didn't have any pancake batter. So I thought I got all these pita bread, um, these, these Greek, they're called Greek pita. They're flat, it's flat bread, and it's Papa Pita by Papa Pita. See, there it is. Give credit where credit is due. These things are wonderful. Kylie's down there. She want one. Try to like I said, we try to accommodate our show. I'm gonna let you taste one, see if you like. I know you'll like it after I get it all put it together and it's fried up. So Kylie's still with me this morning. She's hanging out with me, um, just doing her little usually Kylie thing. So Kareem, love, love, love these. I'm I'm all I'm supposed to be doing fish and cream of wheat, but he asked for these, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these done. This it this takes a hot ten minutes to do. So as you saw, all I did was just took a. Uh, a couple slices of pita bread, cut it in pieces like this, and I've got um, some butter off to the side over there on the stove already, and I'm just going to take and drop these in just like that. Get them drenched in that. Uh, this is uh, one egg and a fourth a cup of cream, milk cream, whatever you got, a tablespoon of brown sugar, a half teaspoon of vanilla flavor, and some, if you got nutmeg, allspice, whatever you got like that to put in there to sort of give it a, another little element of flavor. And it's just as simple. And then you're going to cook them in that pan for about a good five minutes. And they're done. 
and they make nice little you can do because i put the brown sugar you can either put uh syrup on it or not or you can do jelly or just eat them like they are but this is one of those quick things you know kids guys especially love stuff like this snack food type stuff it's good and it's healthy and very tasty so this is just something i made up off the cup eventually when i get that cookbook done guess what y'all will see it in the cookbook honey this is just greek pita bread with that egg and milk wash on it and i'm gonna put it in a pan and fry it up in some butter hang on one sec for me Okay, we're ready to get over here now to the stove. I'm just going to get these going in the pan just to show you how simple and easy it is. Um, of course, I got my tea kettle on there. I have to have my little hot stuff in the morning. Um, don't want to have the pan too hot, but hot enough. I'm going to take some of these off the bottom that's been sitting in there. You sort of want that mixture to soak in and you don't want to have that pot pan too 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 hot because guess what you don't want them to get brown too quick and definitely don't want them to burn i can get most of these in one skillet this is sort of my big skillet here and you can by the way you can mix that uh butter with a little cooking oil that way it won't be totally 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 butter and if you want extra butter just put you a little bit more on once they're done but this is just that simple to do, y'all. Just let y'all see what I'm doing uh, for breakfast. Okay, so we'll get this going. And we'll be back when we get the fit, get ready to do the fish. I'm doing fish patties and cream of wheat, y'all. Short last. You know, when you got to cook, uh, just thought about it, when you got to cook a meal that's going to take a little while. And those fish patties and uh, cream of wheat going to take a, a few minutes to cook. Simply because I got, I'm going to put them together start to finish. I'm going to use a fish and we'll talk all about it. But these um, these pita bread uh, cinnamon crisps can be just like a little hors d'oeuvre. How about that? Especially when you got big eaters and they're sitting around looking at you like, uh, when you going to finish cooking? Or are you going to cook and all that kind of stuff? Stuff over here on the side. This is that day when the biggest kitchen would work. But other days, I am fine where I am. Fine where I am. Y'all think these are ready to be turned. But anyway, we're going to use these, you know, just to fill these little breakfast hors d'oeuvres, y'all. Okay? And this is, a good, this is a good idea. Now, when you got kids hanging around and you know that you got a lot of food cooked, you can let one of them do because it's just that simple to do. So anyway, I'll be right back in a minute. See, I've turned them the first time. That batch is about ready to come out, so they'll be done in another two or three minutes. Okay, y'all, we're back. I'm getting ready to do these fish cakes to put them in. First of all, I'm going to just, you know, of course, i got to season them. This is uh, three nice sizes. So these are tilapia fillets. I got these at Sam Phillips. And for those of you who don't like tilapia, oh, well. Uh, fish of choice, you know, there's some tilapia that uh, we're supposed to be able to use and I trust Sam's Club, how about that? Okay, so anyway, we're going to sprinkle um, to get this fish seasoned up pretty good. This is my seafood uh, season that I bought from any kind of seafood season that you choose to use, but this is a gourmet collection seafood spectacular that i purchased from um what do you call that place uh not ross's but tj maxx they had it in tj maxx they, sometimes they have a pretty good little selection of uh seasoning and this is just a spring and, and you know what this is not exact measurements y'all this is about a pound of fish and this is sprinkling on just sprinkle 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 just lightly sprinkle that is italian season y'all know me i'm gonna sprinkle everything i got in the cabinet pretty much this is a little bit of lemon pepper that comes out pretty freely. And uh, sprinkle a little bit of ground black pepper. Just sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And flip side. You got to do both sides. And just do the, basically do the same thing. And then once I get them all sprinkled up, 
I am going to put them in the pan and saute them for about two or three minutes. Then I'll bring them back and I'll flake them up and then I'll get my other ingredients going. So hold on for me. Okay, I've got the fish all seasoned up. So now I've got me some hot, hot olive oil here on the burner. Turn up on high heat. Heat that olive oil about a couple of tablespoons. Because now I'm just going to saute these or braise or seal or have whatever, whatever process you want to call this. Just throw them in the pan. <clears throat> and about three minutes on each side. They don't have to be completely done, but just enough so that they get, so that I can flake them and chop, get them chopped up and ready to go into the rest of my ingredients. Okay, so the other ingredients I'm going to be using is breadcrumbs and all the seasons that I just seasoned it with. And of course I'm going to use, uh, I'll probably just one egg and um, one egg, the breadcrumbs. Oh, bell pepper, celery, and onion, chop, finely chop. I'm putting it in my food ninja to uh, chop it up, get all that done. <clears throat> and when we get it all mixed up, then we're going to make fish cakes. Fry them in some olive oil and butter. Or well, smart start and, and olive oil. And that's going to be our, well, it's be brunch now because we've, we've already had our little uh, pita cinnamon crunch breakfast little things there. I had mine with a good old hot cup of cinnamon turmeric coffee. Just, and when people even say that honey it's a cup of coffee with a half a teaspoon of a big old cup of coffee now half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of turmeric and whatever cream or you use if you use sweetener and just stir it up and just make a good breakfast drink for me. And it's a healthy drink because of the uh, turmeric and the cinnamon. Okay. Got these uh Nice pieces of tilapia frying on <clears throat> medium high heat. About three minutes, like I said, on each side. And then when I get done doing, doing that, I'm just going to chop them with the other ingredients in them. And the rest will be history. Uh, I'm so excited, too, that this is Black History Month. And I love sharing Black history. I just uh, regret that I'm not able this year to do my usual Black History presentation. Uh, for health reasons, I cannot do this. A lot, a lot of work. It, it takes about a, a good, solid two weeks to put that display up, non-stop almost. And when I have the leisure to put it up, I, if I get the space uh, a month ahead of time, that's good because then I can fine tune it, tweak it, and you don't have time to go back and forth, back and forth with it, but when I only have two weeks, it takes that week. It no less than two weeks. That space that I do is probably, that room is probably, uh, I'm say a 12 by 15 room. And I just load it up with everything I can think of to put it in. Okay, let's just flip these fillets over. Oh, they look good. They smell good, y'all. And I just decided I'm going to do fish cakes out of them. Just, um, I just, you already have your mouth and you got picks for a certain food fix in a certain manner because what I'm thinking is I, I can taste those good crunchy fish cakes with all that seasoning and flavor. You can eat them just like they are. You can make a little sauce to go on. You can eat them with grits, cream of wheat, eat them in a sandwich, on a bun, however you want to do them. They're going to be wonderfully delicious. As Kyle can say, delicious. Okay, so we'll be right back, y'all. Okay, y'all, here we go. The fish is ready to come out of the pan. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a uh, mixing bowl and st just start pulling it apart. Okay. What, y'all? Your, your spinner? Oh, I don't know where it is. Where'd you put it? Oh, you see it? Oh, okay. I should have known she saw it. Kids see everything. So I'm just going to get all the fish. Yes, can you, can you give me a, just a second here, please, ma'am? Thank you so ever so much. Thank you so much, Kyla. Okay, so now we got that done. So we're ready to do this as soon as I give Kyla her spinner. Where's your spinner, Shula? Where is it? Outside. Lord, it's outside, y'all. Hold on. Okay, here we go, y'all. I'm getting ready now to do the fish okay so i got the fish out of the pan i sauteed it a little bit and then what i'm going to do is just take a like this, this spatula i don't want to do it too 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 much so what i'm going to do 
is I'm just going to take the and, um, fork and do what you call flake it. I think it's what you call flake it. In other words, it just needs to pull it apart like you do anything else. Um, but it's flaking it, I'm sure it's somebody uh, along the line there made up that cooking term. So it's, it looks like crab meat. It look, looks like any other kind of fish. Smells like crab meat. Uh, we're going to juice it up so well. Uh, if I didn't tell you what kind of fish I was using, you would never even know. Okay, so that's enough. That's as much as I'm going to do because we're going to do a lot of stirring. I don't want it to be mushed up. I want to have some little chunks of fish in there. So we're going to go ahead next and put in our ground up peppers, onions. So these are my bell peppers, onions, and celery that I put in my ninja. Let me move the camera up a little bit here. That way you can see. Here, there we go. Get right in there. I know y'all like to see what I've got going on. So I'm going to try to make sure you do as much as possible. So just get all the veggies. Yeah, I'm going to have to get my veggies in. And plus, you know, the veggies, I could have sauteed them, but I don't think it would have made that that much difference. And besides, this is something I just made up and I need to really get my day going. So I'm going to put just about a half a teaspoon more of this uh, spectacular seafood seasoning in there. How about that? The sous chef found, she found the measuring spoon. So there's a, so I can get exact measurements. So again, that's about a pound of fish. Um, one small onion, one small green pepper, and we're going to put about a couple, about a teaspoon of garlic powder in there. And we're going to put uh, a good old teaspoon of uh, lemon pepper season. I'm trying to be good and use the measuring spoon. Powder. That's Kylie. The, the house didn't just fall in. That was Kylie back there. She is playing with her. What she called it? It's, it's her spin, spinner. It's her spinner. She just told me it's her spinner. And then, of course, we can just sprinkle. So I'm just going to sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. About a half a teaspoon of uh, black pepper in there. So those are my dry ingredients. The next thing I'm going to do is put an egg in there. Where's my honey? I hid it. Because I, I dropped the first one. Believe that. Well, not necessarily drop it. I put it on the counter and it rolled right off. <coughs> Excuse me. That dry stuff got my throat. Mm. Okay. So, when we get everything all in there, we're just going to make some nice size patties. And we're going to drop them in my oil. I got some oil over here on the side. I've got a fourth of a cup of olive oil. A fourth of a cup of, um, what do you call it? canola oil and then I'm going to put some um, uh, either butter or smart start either one so you it's your choice I use smart start I had to get off the butter okay so the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is to put in some Italian flavored breadcrumbs okay put my breadcrumbs in there that's two let me put three. I'm probably going to have to use four tablespoons of uh, breadcrumbs. That's Italian breadcrumbs. Four tablespoons is what I've put so far. And I'm going to put some. I've got, I'm using, I'm going to use Zatarain's uh, fish fry to fry them, to dip and fry them. And I'm also going to put some inside of them. So, you know, it's cornmeal. Let me come on. I'm going to start out with two tablespoons of cornmeal. Okay. Then, I'm going to beat up an egg, and I'm going to put that egg in there, and that's going to make it, you know, we don't want it to be loose. We want it to be as compact as possible, because when we cook it, we don't want it to fall apart. That's the main thing with that. So, I'm going to get my egg. Honey, I hid that egg so good now, I don't even see it. There it is. Okay, got my egg. And I'm just going to crack it. And you know what? It was one of those uh, eggs, those... Egg laying is the best one. I mean, you know, the one that costs a little bit more money. So you just beat you with one egg for right now. I think this is all we're going to need. I don't think we're going to need any more than that. Egg wise. So I'm just going to pull that one egg in there. Okay. And then I am going to. This here is my Greek yogurt. So just for good measure, 
I'm going to put in some Greek yogurt just because I decided I wanted to. So this is about, I don't know what it's going to do, but we'll know when we get it all mixed up. And this is just something uh, to make it a little bit more cohesive. Something to help it stick together since I'm only doing one egg and that's the only liquid that I'm using right now, so to speak. Okay, so what I'm just going to do is go in there and give it a good stir. Let me get this ring off. I need to wash over here. Let's go ahead and wash my hands here. I forgot to take my ring off before. What you saying, Tyler? You got what in your eye? Some Eggies. What is Eggies? She says she got Eggies in. She got some Eggies in her eye. What's Eggies, y'all? What's E.T.? Oh, okay. She making up stuff. You know, when children, uh, only children, or either kids that play by themselves, they make up all kind of little names and things. Okay, so. I think that's pretty good. I may or may not have to add um, something else to thicken it up. We'll see. Okay. It's looking good, y'all. You know, this looks like almost like um, the mixture for salmon patties. I mean, same. Okay, that's that's a chunk of fish. And I did get some nice chunks of fish in there. So we just need to make sure we get it mixed up really, really good. It's mainly for the uh, purpose of that egg to make sure it's all mixed in. So what I'm going to do at this point, again, this is my test kitchen uh, recipe for the day. It's not my test kitchen. What kind of kitchen is it, Tyler? She said, it's not my test kitchen. Oh, you know what else I'm going to put in here, too? I'm going to put this little bit in the skillet just to see what it tastes like. I'm going to do one little ball. Because y'all know I like to test my food before I put it on the table. I want to put some of this uh, masala seasoning in there, this one here, but I got to make sure first whether or not there's enough salt content in it. I, if you notice, I didn't add any extra salt, but those dry ingredients that I added did have salt already in them. So, we're just going to wait and see. I got that little one over there in the skillet cooking. So, hold on just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay. Mm. That's good. Mm -mm. You know what? Did you yummy, know yummy, yummy. That in your mouth? It was a piece of fish cake. Can I take one? You have to wait. Let me cook another. I don't have any more. Kyla wants her one. Okay. Since I, um, I think there's enough salt content in there. Ooh, that tastes really good, y'all. That little bit of, uh, of, uh, sour cream, or uh, Greek yogurt gave it a real little kick, huh? Okay, I gotta cook one first. I don't have another one right now. Let me cook one, then I, I'll call you. I said, Kyle, come get you a fish cake. I should've known. <laughs> Kyle, come get you a fish cake. So, anyway, um... One thing that I did note as I was uh, cooking that particular little one is that can't have that grease too, too hot. And I know that, you know, based on what we talked about before, it has egg in it and it starts to brown right away. So you have to be very, very careful with the um, heat, very careful with that heat, okay? Um... I need, I mean, a little bit of, uh, I need that turmeric flavor, and it just done. I mean, you got pure brown turmeric, just add some. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit, about a half a teaspoon of turmeric. And I think that's going to do what I need. Okay. Yeah. I like that, that flavor of the turmeric. I don't like to mix it too, 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 too much. 
I'm getting mixed around in there pretty good. And I think I am going to make some kind of, um, I don't know, whatever, is it hollandaise or whatever sauce. I'll, I'll come up with something to pour, some kind of little creamy something or other to pour over here. Something buttery, creamy, whatever. Okay. So, and I think also inside of there. Carrie, come get your washcloth, please, baby doll. Get your washcloth off the floor for me. I'm going to put about a couple of tablespoons of, of uh, Smart Start in there, too. It's not going to hurt a thing. It's just going to enhance the flavor. You know, some things just need to taste buttery. And since I can't have butter, I can have Smart Start. I can have the Smart Start, y'all. Okay. Okay, y'all. Now, I had to put my... um. My Goya seasoning in there. I only put a half a pack in there, uh, and I also well, y'all. I told y'all I put the turmeric in there, so I had to, you know, I know I had to get my hands in here. So now we're gonna make our little balls about two inches. I don't want them too thick because I, I like them cooked all the way and nice and sort of crisp on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is drop them in that meal, and as we drop them in the meal, we'll roll them in there, and then we'll flatten them, and then we'll get them in the pan for, after. Everything together. Maybe I might get eight or ten. I don't know. Not sure. Let's just see here. Eight to ten is what I'm looking for. If I get eight, I'm good. I'd love to have ten. But you know what? That's a pound of uh it's only a pound. And then you're not adding that much more um to it that's gonna add a whole lot to making it, you know? Like okay. Yeah, I think I, I know I'll get my eight for sure. Surely, surely, surely I'm gonna get the eight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, like, is like this. Just roll them around in that uh, Zataran. Remember, we put a tablespoon, so we're gonna make them about like so. Okay, get them rolled around in there. Okay, we're gonna roll them around in there like so and then get them we get about ready and remember get that heat that uh, all good and hot and then back it down now because you can't cook it on real high you have to cook it on like medium high and you want the reason you want it on a little bit high because you want that crispness to form and I'm not deep frying it I'm pan frying it I think if you deep fry it they'll fr probably fall apart Ooh, that one feel like this might be a little bit too much. Put some of that one back. I don't want them too big. These are nice size. Okay. Yep, these are Peggy's. And, th and this is a salute to Black History Month as well. I mean, this is just what I've always done. You know, always been around the kitchen with my grandmother and my mother and and like I said, we grew up, we didn't have a whole lot. I, I won't even say, I, I'm not going to call it poor because we were rich in, oh God, I'm about, it's about to make me cry. We were rich in spirit and in love and in what we had. We were rich in accepting it because like I say, when I grew up, honey, I loved life so much just like I do now. I didn't even realize I was poor because when I had a blast from the past because when I came up, there were things that I didn't have, of course, as a child. You know, you notice that I'm not going to pretend there were things that I didn't have that I wanted, but it was no big deal, and, and I didn't know until when I got older, when I started saying, hmm, when I start seeing other stuff, you know, that, that's what sort of pulls you into materialistic things, when you start seeing other people, and then you start to want stuff, okay, and there's nothing wrong with that, I don't, I don't knock that, honey, because my thing was clothes and shoes, when I realized that I love clothes and shoes and didn't have a lot of them when I turned, I think I was 12 or 13 when I got, because back then, see, you could work when you were that young. Um, so I got me a little job over the summer, honey, and that's when I started getting my little, you know, I make up maybe over the summer, make a hundred dollars or 75, whatever it was, but I made enough to buy those clothes that I always saw every other child 
walking around with. So when I started in, I think it was the eighth grade. When I started eighth grade, honey, that next summer, when I started either eighth or ninth grade, when I went back to school, I had me some cute lot outfits. I'll never forget, I bought my purple, because that was my school color. Bought me a purple pleated skirt. It's a big old fuzzy purple sweater. I had a, 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 a green one. And I think, you know, probably most of them, I can, as I remember, they were pretty much all the same. Okay, now we're going to get these over to the stove. Okay. Let's get the camera, as Kylie can say. Let's get the camera over there. Got them over here to the stove. Now, I'm going to start dropping them into that hot oil. And I think I've got, you know, the wrong little thing right there where I fried that other one. Okay, so what we're going to do is just start dropping into that hot oil and make sure they're well coated with that uh, that cornmeal. And I'm going to have them on medium high. Oh, perfect, perfect. That heat is perfect, y'all, when I tell you. And you can sort of flatten them out a little bit because they're kind of a little bit thick. Um, And we're just going to pray that they're just going to stay together. Let's stay together. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I'm going to put, so I have plenty of room in there. I'm going to put five and five. I got ten out of that bunch. I'm excited. So I'll fry them five and five. That way I have plenty of room to flip them, flatten them, and do whatever I need to do to them. And they're going to fry nicely on that medium, that medium high heat. So we're just going to let them fry there for a little while. About five minutes on each side. And we'll be ready to take them out. And we're going to put them on a paper towel to drain that extra oil out of them. So we'll be back. Okay, y'all. It's time to flip these first ones. Do like that. They will go perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect. And then they got a nice crunch on the outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These are home style. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And they can mash them just a little bit. Sort of flatten them out a little bit. That's what I want to be able to do. Perfect, y'all. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I got ten of them. And they're gonna be nice and cooked all the way through. I'll Five minutes on that first side. I'm going to five minutes on this side. I think it is. Let's see. Yeah. Maybe four minutes. Because you know when you do the first batch, the second batch cooks a little bit faster because it's already heated through. So. More like four minutes. So at uh, 12 o'clock, those will be done. And then I'll put the next batch in. Hope y'all are having a God bless. Tuesday. This is Tuesday. Um, the weather here is still nice in terms of what it feels like. It's kind of overcast and cloudy a little bit. Not a lot. There again, I've got to uh, check the weather and see what's going on. I spoke with my sister-in-law. See, must have been, wasn't yesterday. It must have been Saturday and she was telling me in, she lives in Atlanta. It was, the weather was uh, kind of rough there for a little while. So, but everybody was okay. Try to stay in touch with family, see what's going on with them um, as often as I can. So, we got this. Okay, I got my, I'm not all that sure if I'm going to do the cream of wheat. I'm going to see who wants cream of wheat, first of all. Because they may just want to do these patties with, um, some bread or something. I don't know. Okay. Alrighty then. So we're going to go off and come back. When I come back, it'll be time, I think. To take these out and put the next batch in. I thought it was just beautifully browned. Okay, y'all, it's time to take the first batch out. Time to get them out. 
I don't even have a thing ready for me. I'm coming. I don't We go ahead and put in uh, some paper towels and then drain them. And this is five here. Okay. Oh, they smell, y'all. My kitchen is my whole house. I'm sure it smells of um, fish cakes. Let's see here, brown. I want to make sure that other side was. The right shade of brown. Okay, so now that skillet is good and hot. We're just gonna go ahead and dust these again. Three. Okay, let's see. Well, let's see, y'all. Uh, four. And that's the last one, number five. Okay, so we got about 10 minutes on these, and we will uh, be ready to taste. Alrighty, my little kitchen helper. She told me her mom was getting her a stove, her own stove and her own um, vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner? Yep, vacuum cleaner. Yeah, what's your mom getting for you? Let me show you. Kylie, tell them what your mom is buying for you. I'm about to get a, 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 I'm about to get a big AOL surprise. A AOL surprise. I don't know where she get all this stuff from. And tell me about you. Tell me what's on your profile. Morning, it's on where on your what? On my profile. Okay, thank you so much, darling. You get ready to go watch. You want something off your profile right now? Yeah, I want to look at mine. Okay, all right. So, honey, be beyond me to how she knows all this stuff. Hold on, y'all. Okay, y'all, there it is. I am done with my fish cakes. I went ahead and I decided cream potatoes. Some nice cream potatoes to go with those fish cakes right there. Nice cream potatoes, and those are beautiful. I ended up getting 10 nice-sized fish cakes out of there. So we get ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy a few of these. And I may make some white sauce or something like that. But we usually eat hot sauce with ours. So thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for continuing to pray without ceasing. Thank y'all for considering reconciliation and for praying for our country and for all the things that are going on around us, with us, and to us. So, until I decide to cook again, thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for our next Black History Tips. Now, remember, this is the month of February, so learn something about the African American culture. Uh, if no more than uh, what I'll be passing along to you, and you can pass it along to others. Love you guys. Thank y'all so, 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 so much. Have a God-blessed day. And until I decide to cook again and bring you some more Black History tips, keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to come down. Toodaloo!